Marianne Fazla is one of South Africa's most eminent designers. She's often referred to as the doyen of South African fashion. She joins me in studio now. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. You've said that for relevance, fashion needs to reflect a moment in time. What did you say that that moment is for South Africa now? Um, yes, it does, but I think fashion always reflects that moment in time. So that's how fashion is created. People forget about that. So I think now there's definitely we're entering uh, next year, the year of Africa. I think there's a great moment that happened on the catwalks of Paris Fashion Week now, the couture one, where suddenly all diversity is on the ramp, which was so long leading up to it and it was such a how you know like that happened and it was you know what just happened there suddenly everybody is doing it you've been a designer for over 20 years in south africa what would yes. you say the business model that served you well is well you obviously have to be very much aware of the business of fashion it's l as simple as running a spaza shop you can't spend more than you bring in. And you have to be constantly understanding what your outflow is and what your income is. So it's a very simple, it's a very sp simple equation. There's so many amazing people that work for me, I could not tell them. Mm -hmm. that money, money is what makes my business run. Can you tell from your clothing, sales, mm. and the kind of business that you're doing, the state of the South African economy? Do you have moments where there's a huge uptick and you know that we're doing well, anything like that? I think there's definitely when there's a feel-good factor, people spend more money. And when people are a bit depressed, like they are at the moment, that you know the, the possibility, the potential, uh, we're all a bit concerned in terms of, of Eskom and power supply. A lot of our production gets affected by that. So I think that in the kind of level that I'm working at, we don't really have much passing trade when people are feeling down. But we always have business because there are orders waiting, we have to generate new product. So we sort of know when it's more quiet, we have an opportunity to create more exciting things, not more boring things. Mm -hmm. there, there is this uh, thing of fast fashion, many more people are getting involved in fashion than mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. um, earlier on I was speaking to Taslim and she was speaking about Instagram. Yes. Uh, there's a whole raft of boutiques that come about with mm -hmm. cheap clothing, cheap fabric um, and cheap prices. What do you think of that and do you think that they, because uh, there are some people who say that the only way they can afford things that are beautiful and trendy is if they are at a very low price point. Well firstly I think that that is not sustainable at all. I mean for me as an ethical brand I would never encourage uh, instant fashion. I would really encourage you to develop your own personal style, to remain true to who you are, to invest in good clothing and if you just go around buying two-dimensional trendy clothes then I don't, I don't know what you call yourself. Perhaps then you deserve that fashionista label that is just completely so empty. Because fashion is a serious thing, you know. You can communicate exactly who you are. I mean, look at you. You look fantastic. Mm -hmm. And fashion is a very powerful tool. And you don't need to, to have a lot of clothes in order to project who you are. So, you know, I think that that's just not sustainable. I really believe in sustainable fashion. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the role of fashion in alleviating some of the social challenges we're facing. You've spoken about ESCOM. One of them is our extremely high unemployment rate, yes. especially when it comes to youth. What role do you see the fashion industry um, as a whole playing there? Well, of course, we've been bleeding jobs in the, in, in the manufacturing sector. So I really would encourage, like Fred said, you know, buy local. People really have to focus on buying local and supporting smaller businesses. Because all those people that have been made redundant in the big major clothing sector in South Africa have formed little collectives all over the place. Don't forget that to sew and to make clothing is quite a noble profession. It's put much bread on the table, put many people through university. It's a noble practice, not only in Africa, in India, um, in Peru, wherever you go, that's how people put food on the table. So support them. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the point that you raised about ethical, being ethical in terms of a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, people 
there, there's a sense that people may need to get more educated about where their things are coming from, the type of labor um, that's being used to make their products. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's important and do you think that in the hierarchy of many ills in South Africa, yes. people should really care about things like that? Well, I think that's up to people, you know. I mean, like you either care or you don't care. So you either throw a plastic cup out of your car or bus or taxi or you don't. So it's really it's not really something that you could that I would go around telling people to do because I would assume that the consumer that comes to me is already making an ethical choice and of course it's absolutely essential it's the only way I mean the clothing industry really dumps a lot of stuff onto Africa obsolete stuff they don't use they kill the manufacturing sector um, just producing some fabrics really destroys the environment so actually clothing is serious you know it's a it's a serious business, and if you don't care about who makes your clothes, um, where your clothes come from, then there's really a problem. You know, you, 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 you have to. You eventually not going to have a choice. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News, Marianne Fasler joining us in studio there. Arabi, let's over.